Hey everyone, this is Oz Tool Talk. I'm Dwayne. This is Mike. Hey guys. Uh, this is the first of a five part series. We're doing a comparison of Bosch, <coughs> DeWalt, and Makita 18 volt cordless platforms. Today we are looking just at the batteries. Um, later on, we'll get to looking at the range, um, how the, the most important tools perform in the range, and, uh, and then we'll do a wrap up for you. So, first up, we are going to look at the capacities, the different types of batteries in each, and uh, also whether they got a fuel gauge on them or not. So, uh, in the Bosch, first up, Bosch sort of had three generations. The first generation was a, a 1.3 amp hour slim and a 2.6 amp hour fat battery. Uh, so, that was the first generation, no gauges on those. Yep. Um, then they moved to a 1.5 and a 3 amp hour. Uh, these have the, uh, the fuel gauges, I, I think uh, they're one of the, the few that have it on the threes. And then their latest generation, where they have the 2 amp hour slim and a 4 amp hour fat battery, which uh, do have, again, the fuel gauges. And uh, their 5 amp hour is over, out overseas in America and Europe. Not here yet. I'm sure we'll see them soon. Should be soon. Uh, in the DeWalt, DeWalt have just got the two sort of generations in their current uh, slide on lithium packs. Uh, the first one with the 1.5 and the 3 amp hours. Uh, they were black batteries, no fuel gauge on those at all. Uh, now they've got the 2 amp slim and the 4 amp hour fat, uh, which do have the, uh, the gauge on the back. And uh, they are predominantly yellow. No word yet on 5 amp hour, but I'm pretty sure we'll see one. At some stage. What about Makita? Uh, Makita, you can class them as uh, one generation as Dwayne's clustered. Uh, we've got 1.3s, we've then got a 3 amp hour, we've got a 4 amp hour. Uh, none of these have fuel gauges, so it's something they need to work on. So, obviously we're only talking lithium here, this is where the market is, we're on lithium. So, for these three, they don't have a fuel gauge. Uh, we were talking the other day about the 5 coming out, we do happen to have one. Picked it up today, um, awesome piece of unit. Had a little bit of a play today, surprisingly it is identical uh, weight to a 3 amp hour, which I was really surprised at because I was starting to talk uh, with Dwayne and so I was saying, look, 5 amp hour, it's getting too heavy, it's going to be crazy. Um, I was wrong. So, what we do have is the 5 amp hour for Makita as well. So we've got the 4 batteries. Makita messed up a little bit. They bought out the 4 late, now all of a sudden jumped onto the 5, which they needed to do because Metabo and the 5.2, uh, everybody's going 5, so around about the 5. So, yeah, that's where we're at. With Makita. Yep, so no fuel gauges on those, nope. um, but uh, one of the first to bring out a 5 in Australia, Yep. Um, which is good. Alright, so uh, then let's talk about some charges. Uh, charges are a bit of a black art to me. Uh, you can't quite tell just by the amperage on the charger how fast it's going to take. Mm. To speak in generalities, uh, the Bosch and the Makita have uh, a half hour and a one hour charger. DeWalt's just got the one hour charger. Um, so interesting to see if they come out with a fast charger. Um, that's all there is to say I think about those. Yeah, uh, we were talking earlier just in regards to uh, with your chargers, a lot of them now, or most of them now, they'll have the fans in them for the cooling of them. The bigger the packs get, the more heat you're either punching in with the charger or you're producing when you're loading the tool up fairly hard. So something that, again, I don't want to pick on Makita, but their batteries are a flat base. This may make a difference just in even small in your uh, 20 volt, in your DeWalt, you've got nice cool pack underneath, so it's a nice honeycomb. In your Bosch, you've also got, well it's not a honeycomb, but it's a grid pattern, so it allows a bit of airflow. Yep, yep, and Mark brings up a good point there. Uh, the DeWalt uh, are classified 20 volt in America. In Australia, they're called the 18 volt XR. It's yep. exactly the same thing. No difference. Tools and batteries and chargers, all interchangeable. Yep. I accept the charger, of course, which is, uh, will have different voltage uh, yeah. in the wall. I think it was a little bit of gameplay, but possibly also just where America wanted to be. Yeah. The 18 volt will actually charge to a max of 20 volts. Yeah. So, yeah. as Dwayne said, uh, they're exactly the same. Exactly. Okay, um, what about uh, price, Mike? Dollars, really hard to say. Uh, also depends when you're watching this, guys. A 4 amp hour battery, around the $120 mark, almost across these three brands. Now, we're at this stage, we're talking about these three main brands. At the moment in Australia, these are the three key um, brands in 18 volt, we'd have to say. Yeah, probably that in Milwaukee, probably around out the four. Yep, yep. 
So around the 120 for a four amp hour. Now we do know the five that I just received and there's not many places around Australia at the moment that have the five on the floor, uh, $188. So uh, not badly priced yep. if you really wanted a couple of those higher volt, uh, voltage, uh, sorry, higher output tools. Yep. Five amp hours where you want to be and later on at some point we'll talk about 36 volt. Uh, which is twin 18 volts, and that's when this thing will come in. So. Yeah, yeah. Big, big capacity battery is going to be excellent if you're trying to use your circular saw all day or yep. your grinder all day. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some compa compatibility uh, stuff. Uh, in the Dewalt, uh, I don't believe that there are any uh, compatibility issues backwards or forwards. Um, no. Don't have the 1.5s here. I haven't checked whether they go onto the the bigger tools, but I think they do. Um, Bosch. Their first generation slim batteries, the 1.3s, which I don't have here, uh, you can't stick them on uh, some of the higher draw tools. Yep. Um, same with the Makita, uh, just, it's just trying to idiot proof them a little bit. Uh, you, it's not a big enough gas tank to run, run those high draw tools. Uh, but in terms of your bigger batteries, and even the slim 2 amp hour batteries, you can stick these on any tool and away you go. Yep. How about Makita? Uh, Makita, Dwayne touched on it a little bit. The 1.3 guys, it will only go on an impact driver, a medium duty drill, one of their, I don't know how many torches, uh, too many torches, uh, and also the vacuum cleaner. So 1.3 is a bit of a funny one. I love them. Uh, I'm not a heavy duty tradie, so I think they're great. But for a tradie who's running up and down, you've got all the heavy uh, output tools. They're actually a bit of a furphy, so they won't go on anything other than four tools. Your 3, 4 and 5, uh, I believe, will go on virtually all of them. What I will say, though, is the 4 and the 5, what you need to be careful of, on the front of the box, I'm not sure if you can quite see here, but we've got a star, which is actually printed in the base of the tool, or a yellow panel. If you can actually just grab that multi-tool, Dwayne, show us that yellow panel. Yep. So Dwayne will show you that. You've got to have that, or there's a star actually stamped into it. Yep. That means the four and the five will go into it, guys. All right, so a yep. little bit of a drama there. Uh, Dwayne will also just touch, we have a list here somewhere, yeah. don't we? Yeah, so I've got this list. Um, this is you know from one store only, but it kind of shows you these are the, the tools, the skins that aren't compatible with the new fours and fives. Uh, this lot here uh, are only compatible from a certain serial number on. And then this bigger lot here are, is the ones that uh, the fours and fives are compatible with. Uh, you're going to need to check whether your skin has a star on the bottom or the yellow plate. Uh, it's pretty disappointing, to be honest, for Makita Makita fans and Makita users. Um, you want to just be able to walk in, buy the latest battery, and away you go. Uh, I think, as a generalisation, the later skins are probably going to be fine. Uh, but you do need to check it before you buy it. Yeah, well, if you've skinned up six months ago, 12 months ago, uh, on a heap of their new stuff, and then all of a sudden we've got four and fives that have come out, that's that's insane. That piece of paper there, I've got Dwayne to do it because I don't do that sort of thing. You know, like I want to be able to roll in, see the tool I like, throw a battery on it, and go. Yep. Dwayne's more about figures. He finds out all the nitty-gritty. That's what he found out for you guys. So you guys, that's what you're up against if you're a Makita fan and you're not prepared to move away. Uh, makes it all very confusing. So as much as I'm excited that they're... Out with the five, it's a great thing for Makita lovers. Uh, it is a bit painful in that you've got to sit there and check for a star or a serial number. Uh, I don't think it's good enough. No, no, not, not good enough at all. Uh, Alright, let's have a little chat about reliability. Um, so I'm running the Bosch and the DeWalt platforms at home. Um, I've had no problems with them at all uh, in, the, in the latest lithium lineups. I uh, like them both. Uh, as Mike touched on before, um, they've both got some uh, sort of heat dissipation on those tools. As we know, uh, heat is the worst enemy of a battery. Um, so the cooler you can keep your battery, uh, the better. Um, the Bosch are actually claiming on their two and their four amp hour packs that they're cool packs, you can tell by the gray on the side there. Um, so they reckon theirs are gonna stay cooler than everyone else's. Uh, how about Makita reliability? Makita reliability, uh, a couple of years ago they did have some drama. So Makita sort of got a bad name there for a little bit in their lithium. They had a really bad batch uh, and it was for well, a good six months that we had dramas with these batteries. There were a lot of complaints. Makita wouldn't admit to it, but turns out fixed it all. Once it was all fixed, they did say, yeah, look, we had a bit of a drama. For the last couple of years, I'd say, uh, very, very good. So no dramas whatsoever as far as um, having major problems. What we do need to remember also is volume. You know, if you've got a problem with the battery, 
when it's a brand that doesn't sell many, a 3% looks like nothing. 3% on a high volume selling platform or, or brand, that all of a sudden exacerbates the problem. So that also uh, you need to be aware of. But reliability at the moment, the Makita's no dramas. Uh, I know for a fact that the, the Bosch are bulletproof. I have Makita, I've run a lot of Makita. The Bosch, I haven't used it on the field, but I have been in a workshop and we were allowed to try and smoke this thing, overdraw the battery, try and destroy it. They are almost unbreakable. I say almost because you can always be proven wrong, but uh, very, very tough batteries, the Bosch. Yep. So Dwayne's onto a good thing. I haven't used much of the DeWalt at all, but uh, yeah, Makita probably loses out a little bit um, in that, uh, just because they get a little bit of a blip on the radar. Yep, lovely. All right, so uh, to sum up, <clears throat> uh, yep, we love the Bosch batteries. Uh, they've got the fuel gauges all over the place and uh, nice cool packs, uh, beautiful slim batteries. Um, so lovely. Uh, DeWalt we think probably just a tad behind. Don't have the fuel gauges on the 3s and the 1.5s. Um, but uh, had nothing but good things to say about them so far. And Makita, uh, really missing out with the fuel gauges. Yep. Uh, we don't think that's good enough for a current platform. Yep. Uh, we, wanna, we want to see the fuel gauge on the battery. They've got it on some of their skins. Yep. Um, but on the battery is most important and also a lack of a high capacity slim battery like the Bosch and the DeWalt have uh, in the in the Makita. Yeah, I agree with Diane. you do need, Makita does need to step up at some point I think to a, a 2 amp hour unit. Uh, you do find yourself with having no fuel gauges, just to retouch on that sorry, mm -hmm. on a couple of the tools once you have that availability just to check how far the battery is, if you're heading across the other side of the factory up on a roof you find yourself swapping tools to try and check how your battery is. I, I don't know. It misses the mark. Um, I think they lose out a bit in the battery because of that. Yep, definitely. So Makita is not ahead in the uh, in the battery comparison, but yep. we'll see how they go in our other videos. So upcoming, we have uh, one about the range that is from uh, each of these platforms. Yep. And then we're going to look at some of the skins and do a wrap up. So thanks for listening. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we'll see you soon. See you guys.